So, either your large room or your smaller laptop with everything loaded, you're ready to go and you want to do your assessment. So where are you going to go and find your participants? Well, uh, mm, we spoke a little bit of this when we were speaking about the research, right? Like it's a challenge to find users willing to work for free or for brownies or for whatever you can offer or Amazon gift cards. Uh, but you do need to go out there and find users and you want to find users that are relevant for your research. So what kind of users? Uh, if you're doing like the goal-directed design, as I said before, someone who is representative either of our user base, if this is a product that already exists, or if we are doing the GDD, then our personas. And I want to stop here and make a quick reflection here of how the relationship between the real humans and our personas uh, works. So we started... Where's... Do I have one of these? Oh, here. So when we started here, we started with our persona hypothesis. <coughs> this was just a wild theory. We were not sure who our personas were going to be. From here, we recruited some users, some actual humans, and we interviewed them, and we made questionnaires, and we made user observations. And from here, we derived our persona documents. Then we created the entire system, not for these users, not for these guys, not for this abstract construct, but for these abstract constructs. We designed the system for our personas. And now we recruit, again, we use the personas to recruit real users. And we try to match them with our personas. So we're basically closing the circle here. And this is relevant because after all this process, these users may not be exactly like these users. Because we are wiser. We are two steps further in the process. But the idea is we connect with the real world here. We adapt the real world to our needs. And here we verify that in doing so, even if we change the selection of our users, we are still designing for real humans, even though we made most of the effort focusing on these abstract constructs. Um, and how do you infer uh, skills and uh, attitudes from the real users? Because here, down here. One of our personas um, is shy and maybe he, he is not really confident. So how can you find the right users? Let's assume that you do have the money and you do have the resources. You do a screening test. You do, you can actually, if you do have the resources and you're openly recruiting like in the street and you're offering something in return, it's very typical to have a first stage where it's, okay, so now you're going to fill in a questionnaire which, in which I may be asking about your skills, your predispositions, your attitudes, uh, whatever. Um, it's actually important. Um, I'm actually going to stop here and then I will go back. I do remember. Um, I do remember one anecdotal case. We had we were doing this thing in a hospital, uh, a medical. I think I spoke about this case earlier. It was a, a game for elderly people to see how they were taking their medications. So we were recruiting from the hospital staff some elderly people that would be able to to work through the program. I mean, and see if they were able to do it. And we had these very, very nice lady. She was 60-something. She was also very small, very lovable. It was like a very grandma type of, of woman. And she was just testing our software. And this was almost production ready. And you know what happened? Uh, in the middle of the test, this was an, a Java applet. Back then, we used Java applets. We had a null pointer exception. Right? And you know how Java fails when it fails. You have like the entire null pointer exception and the entire stack trace. And when that happened, she hit F5 and kept working with the software. So what happened there? Because we were like, holy shit, what the <laughs> aren't you scared by that? She was actually uh, 
software development manager at the hospital. <laughs> and she was in charge of large development software teams and she was very used, she didn't even blink when she saw the null pointer exception because she kept showing them all the time. We did not do any type of previous screening. It would have been very helpful to figure out that she was an expert Java developer and therefore maybe not the best option for our software testing. We just allowed her to continue what gives. Uh, at, she was already sitting down in front of the computer and being recorded, so why bother? But again, previous screening may be important to find out or to make sure that your users are the right type of users. Do not, do not make that mistake. And you do the screening as well, as I said, to, us, to, <coughs> to rest assured that you have nice coverage of your personas with the users that you have selected. And what is the right way to do this? You evaluate with wh whoever you have at hand. And that is minimally resembles, resembles your personas. You want to do also uh, to figure out how many users you're going to need. Here, in general, when we were speaking of... of um, of heuristic evaluation, we had this magic number of four to five looking at it, that beyond that you didn't get any further benefits. With users, you tend to get benefits, always more benefits the more users that you have. It's not as asymptotic, it's also slightly asymptotic, but not as much. Why? Because if you're going for, for mass market applications and you're going for naive users, they have like a million ways of surprising you. And you will always be finding out something new through each of the tests. Again, four to five is still a very nice and important and relevant uh, number. Uh, and here is where you will have to factor in your cost. What's my budget? How many of these I can make? An important reflection here. I will insist on this in half an hour, but I will mention it now. Um, I th have I already mentioned that this is very expensive? This is not only very expensive because of recruiting users and sitting them down, it's also very expensive in terms of post-processing, how you go through the videos, how you go through the materials, that's where the real cost is. So it's very expensive to have a lot of users because your post-processing is going to be a nightmare. And be careful with that and be careful how you use your money.